30 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Good evening and welcome to the Board of Directors Community Television of Santa Cruz County Board of Directors regular meeting of September 24th. Would the secretary please call the roll? Chair Gudger. Here. Director Fisher. Director Hall. Director Rand. Here. Director Waite. Here. Director Mannheim. Here. Director Laurent. Here. Director Maziars. Here. Director Rodrisco. Here. Director Owen. And we may have a late uh, arrival. Um, <coughs> as I heard the doorbell, I'll keep us running to get it. Um, so, uh, thank you very much. The second item on the agenda is oral communications. Any person may address the board during oral communications. All oral communications must be directed to an item not listed on today's consent or regular agenda and must be within the jurisdiction of the board. Um, is anybody here to address the board uh, on oral communications? Okay, seeing none, we will um, welcome Director Fisher as he makes his way to the uh, table. Sure. Um, all right, welcome. Good to see you. Thank you. Um, do any of the directors have uh, any late additions to the agenda? I have none. None? All right, seeing none, we can move on to the consent agenda, which uh, includes approving the minutes of the board retreat on August 25th, accepting the finance committee minutes um, of September 17th, approving the recommendations of the finance committee uh, to accept the June 2018 financial reports and the July 2018 financial reports. Does anybody have, oh, um, Tom, since Joe is not here, would you like to comment on the uh, financial statements? Um, we, uh, we're into the first month of the new uh, fiscal year, and I'm happy to report that in terms of our partnership with Satellite, I think we were like 33% ahead of our projected revenue, so Excellent. that's a good thing. Um, yeah. Excellent. Okay. Um, Great. Does anybody have any questions, comments regarding the consent agenda? Okay. Or I will entertain a motion. Move approval. Second. All right. We have a motion and a second. Um, I had one spelling correction to make at de rigueur. Uh, my name is misspelled. <laughs> uh, on, on the, the finance committee meeting uh, minutes, I forget which one is June or July, but um, besides that, um, small looks, vanity. Yeah, it looks like uh, at the very end. At the end, it's uh, right there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That one. So, uh, if the motion, the maker and the motion, am I allowed to make? Uh, You're moving amendments? an amendment or suggesting yeah. an amendment, and that is fine with me. If okay. It's fine I'll go ahead and second that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I am waiting to call the vote. Um, would all in favor please indicate? For the Aye. consent agenda? For the consent agenda. Okay. Aye. Yes, Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstention? Seeing none, that is approved. Okay, we'll move on to the regular agenda. Um, item eight is to consider approving an addition to the CTB finance financial policies, um, saying, stating that the executive director on an annual basis may award a bonus of no more than $75 per year to each employee based on the employee meeting or exceeding work expectations. Um, that was something that um, I believe uh, Joe brought to the finance committee. Would you like to comment on it, Tom? Yeah, or it was. A, it was. Oh, the, may I say something? Oh yeah. yes, please. Yeah. Sorry, Becca. Um, so after we made that, I read it, and it was in my head, and I was driving down the road, and I thought, wait a minute, <laughs> that it should be cash bonus because the whole thing was about cash. I give people much better bonuses than seventy-five dollars a year. Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. That's just money we might give them at Christmas or on their birthday or something. Okay. Like that. Right. Right. So how would you amend this? I would just add cash because I usually a bonus would be in bonus? your check, and yeah. it was because I gave 
I gave everybody movie cards to the movies, and that mm. apparently is cash, and that became an issue, an IRS thing. So, so the discussion that the finance committee had um, uh, was we did put some money into the budget last year. So in the in the a year ago when we were doing the 18, 19, uh, 17, 18 fiscal year budget, we added some money for cash bonuses and um, uh, Director Hall um, noted that we don't have a policy governing that. So the main point of this is that we have a policy in our uh, um, financial policy, that there is something that addresses the ability for the executive director to give cash bonuses um, and we um, uh, note that it is for uh, meeting or exceeding uh, work expectations, which is what essentially I think there's a nonprofit IRS language that this. Uh, that was one of the criteria. Parallel. Yeah. 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 We've done it a couple of times when people like Victor worked really hard to get the <coughs> captioning working, and, and so when they did that, when they got it working at a certain level, it was really hard to cross. There was a bonus, but they're just little bonuses throughout the year. For the, there are other bonuses, and mm -hmm. they're different, but these are the cash ones. I see. So. Mm -hmm. So, I would move that we pass item eight as written with the um, addition of the word cash before the word bonus. So it would read, the executive director on an annual basis may award a cash bonus of no more than $75 per year to each employee based on the employee meeting or exceeding work expectations. And I'll second that. All right. Well, we have a motion and a second. Does anybody else have any comments or questions? Anything that needs clarifying? No? All right. Then I will call the vote. Um, all in favor, please indicate. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Seeing none, that passes unanimously. All right. Moving on to the next page. We have the um, oral report of the executive director. Okay, so this is um, this is this will include a lot of stuff because we really haven't had a meeting since June. <laughs> so there will be some extra things in here. We did have the retreat, and you and I'm not going to talk about that here because you were all there and you already approved the minutes for that. But there are a couple other things that happened in July and that sort of thing that are in here. So um, uh, the co-working uh, center is, as Tom said, is in profit for September and has been steadily in profit for the past seven months in a row. Pretty exciting. That's excellent. And uh, there's a lot more activity in the cafe area. Today I came in and there <coughs> were a lot of people in there, like, you know, That's eight or ten, mm -hmm. which we don't usually, I, I haven't seen that many people at once before, so that was very nice. And um, we have added some standing desks, and people seem to really like them. And they're not, they're not very expensive, but you can, you can just stand up and start working there and then push it back down. And people really enjoy that. So right. we're going to maybe do a little more of that. And uh, we also added a fun thing. So if you want to visit us, visit on Friday morning. We have an espresso machine and all kinds of things to make coffee with. So we have a fun coffee bar Friday and you can put chocolate in your coffee and mm -hmm. whatever you like to make it fun. We have steamed milk and all kinds of fun things. And we, pay, we play this coffee bar ambiance that you can <laughs> 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 over the speakers. So you can hear cups clinking and things <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. So it's pretty fun. And uh, we've added rocking chairs to the front porch. Those, we thought at first we wanted to put benches out there and we were gonna like bolt them down and we had gotten the kind with dividers in them, so you can't like curl up and go to sleep, but you could sit out there. And then there was a lot of um, there were a lot of questions about maybe we should get cameras in case people sleep on them at night. And so we decided let's just see if people even want to be outside in chairs. So we got some <coughs> plastic rocking chairs and put them on the porch. And people are enjoying those. They make phone calls from there, which is really fun. So in nice weather, we put them out every day and we bring them in at night. And so um, we can, once we get through the end of the nice weather, we can think about whether we want to install something permanent and whether it's worth adding cameras to protect it and that sort of thing. But people seem to like the rocking chairs just like they are. They were, you know, $35 at Home Depot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. nice. so uh, an expensive ex experiment. Uh, on financials, we have hired an accountant to do our compilations. It's so exciting. <laughs> so we've been looking for someone we could afford for two years. 
And uh, we had I <coughs> just had an idea one day, what if we went on Elance and got someone who doesn't live in California but has a California license so they don't have those expensive you know, home payments but have a license. And I found two guys that live in, uh, one guy lives in Minnesota and has a California license. So he's doing our compilations and he's like a CFO and he's got, he's a CPA in, in, in a couple of states and so very skilled and accomplished, doing it for the price that we can afford and um, we should have them in 45 days. Wow. So Great. we'll have all three Great. years. Great. It's so exciting. I can't yeah. tell you how <laughs> much of a relief that is. <laughs> so, um, and so uh, Mel's got everything ready to go. We're just giving him access to QuickBooks, the folders we want him to see, and he can just go in there and do, do what he needs to do. So we're on our way with that. Uh, we completed our health insurance review in August, and I, uh, every year the insurance guy pitches me Kaiser, and I always say no, because um, I didn't want our employees to have to drive over the hill mm -hmm. to get medical care. But now, uh, in that time, Kaiser has installed mm -hmm. a lot of things here, and it's actually, they have very good care, and I have friends who have it, and I've talked to them about, you know, would you sign up for it if you, if you were just able to sign up for what you want, and they said, yeah, they would. So this year, I talked to the um, insurance agent about that. We've had Anthem Blue Cross all this time. And no, no, we haven't. We've had, um, uh, 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 yeah, HealthNet. So we're able to get the Platinum Kaiser product for the same thing we're paying for, like the Silver HealthNet thing. Oh, great. So the, this means that our employees get free preventative care, prescriptions are covered with a $10 copay, and uh, their deductible went down $2,000. Hmm. So, you know, those guys, they're not going to. I mean, it's unlikely that they are going to get some terrible chronic disease, but very likely that they'll fall off their bikes or something <laughs> and get a real broken arm. So that's a, that's a, they need that lower deductible because what will happen to them is sports injuries probably. Mm -hmm. So I'm really happy with that, and we're still working on, we have a dental and a, a vision plan that I'm not happy with. It's not what I thought. I like the vision, but the dental isn't very good. So I'm still working on that, but um, we, have some, we have some options, and I'll let you know what happens with that. And um, we have a really nice agent who actually, if you call their office, if you have trouble with the insurance company or you can't get what you want out of them, they'll call and take care of it. <laughs> you don't even have to do that. You just call them. And he came and explained to them how to use their insurance and how to get the most out of it and what kind of, how to use it strategically. And um, so that was great. We only have a couple people that get that insurance, but I like to know that they've been briefed. Um, studio rentals, we had a great thing. We had five day professional shoot here in September. And that was, uh, it's the puppet guy, in case you don't know. It's a, there's a guy who comes in with puppets and they're uh, to teach kids uh, uh, early reading skills. So he did that, he was here for several days and that was, it was really a nice, um, it was a nice thing to have. It challenged us a little bit, but we got it all done. And now I'm talking to another film producer who's making a movie and he would like to do it for two weeks here. So um, I'm working with him, and this could open up to be a nice little profit center for us if we get the right people and we're able to promote it in the right <coughs> ways. And so um, I'm working with him on a couple ideas to move that idea forward. And the cool thing is, it's, it's just like we planned. So he wants to use the studio, but also needs an office, and he needs a conference room, and he needs a place for them to change clothes and all kinds of things. So he'll rent our equipment. He's definitely going to rent our dolly and our, um, our crane, which is really fun. And um, also, he'll get an office. He'll, he'll need, he's going to use the, um, he wants to use the audio booth. He wants to use an edit suite for dailies. He wants to use the conference room to show dailies and put this, use the big board in there for storyboard. And so it's just, you know, it's just what I was thinking. It's like a real film. When you make a film, you need all these things, but you only need them for two, three weeks, maybe three months, and you can't lease a place for that. So it's hard. So this is, we're perfectly positioned for this. So we're very excited. Mm -hmm. They're excited about the kitchen and the bathroom and this, the shower mm -hmm. and all very exciting. So, so it's what we planned. It's taking a long time to get there, but it's happening. Uh, we, I, we've had a couple of weird things happen. Um, uh, at CMAP, we had a sexual harassment claim, and here at CTV, we had a customer harass another customer. And so, um, it's, I, I've had to, I've been working with attorneys and investigators, and I've seen, I've been uh, shown some cracks in our system that we want to plug up. And uh, so, we're going to do a number of things. We're going to look at the employee handbook 
Uh, there's a couple of clauses in it. We don't need to redo the whole thing, but there are a couple of clauses we need to look at. One is, you, it just says in there that if you do something that the company doesn't like, if you do something wrong, then there will be discipline. But what it really needs to say is progressive discipline, and it has to line that out. It's supposed mm -hmm. to say you get one letter, two letters, three letters, and then you have to go. And we that's what we do, because that's how I've been trained, but I didn't know that it had to be delineated that way, mm -hmm. and it does. So we're gonna have that clause reconstructed. We also are going to do sexual, sexual harassment training for the staffs. We don't have to. We have less than 50 employees, but you know, everybody should know this. And, and we're going to do two things. Uh, what is it and then what should you do if someone is harassing you, you know, how to handle it. So uh, I was looking to do ways to do that. I always, when I've done that, it's always been at big companies and you know, big attorneys come in and talk to you and show films and do role playing and all kinds of things. But um, that's very expensive and they won't do it for companies unless you have at least 20 people and we don't have that. So even combining the two staffs, we still don't have 20 people. So what I'm opting for is a live webinar where it's like uh, interactive, that they can see you and you can see them. And the, the, so the presenters are on a, and, they, and then they show things like little films and pictures and that sort of thing. And people can, can react from the room. So it's a live, <coughs> the person isn't in the room, they may be in Milwaukee, but they are talking to them on our giant screen in the mm -hmm. conference room. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm looking for now. Mm -hmm. I've said I have a couple of companies who do that, and I'm starting to talk to them about that sort of thing. And um, uh, we're also I'm working with the investigator that I use to investigate the issue at CMAP to come up with a criterion for us with customers. So if a customer complains. How, what questions can we ask to see if it rises to the level of harassment or is it just like a rude person or like, you know, where is that? So we can have a little confidence in what we're doing. Um, what we did in this case was we um, discontinued this man's membership and we had him leave. We refunded his money, but um, you know, it's, it's kind of uncomfortable. So I want to, I think we need some something that shows we have like a way of, we're not just going to boot everybody out, but we have this list and if, if you've done this, this, and this, then three of these five things, then sorry, you have to go. Yes? I'm just curious, do we um, have liability we do. if it's between two customers? You, there, I thought you said it was one of these was between two. It customers. was between two customers and we, ha we have a really broad liability, but that's not spelled out anywhere. Um, maybe I should. I can look into that. I think we have we have insurance for if something happens to you when you're uh, here. I'm, I'm sorry. I wasn't talking about insurance. Oh. I was. I was. Oh, are, are we liable? Are we liable if somebody if two, if one customer is harassing another customer? What's mm -hmm. our liability we, as the operators of? We the would only be liable if we're neglectful. Hmm. Well, and so if we have a progressive, you know. Uh, in in our in our uh, progressive discipline, but the progressive discipline in our handbook. Yeah, but these are customers. Yeah. Customers. I know, yeah. but we, we we still need to have uh, a handbook for the for the customers. Well, what we're going to do is put a, cl a a clause in our agreement. Right. So we need to we'll uh, have that written up so that see. it's uh, if you're doing this, then this is you know you're going to have to go. But I honestly think that we only would be liable if we didn't do anything. If they complained and we didn't do anything with right. the complaint. But it, it would be good I, if you're working with the attorney. I, I, yeah, I'll ask them if we are liable and yeah. what, what we can take to do to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. Matilda is right. Mm -hmm. Having it written down as a policy right. is, is mm -hmm. a big step. Mm -hmm. And then following up on the policy is the other thing. And the, right. and the other thing is, you know, for the new radio, radio station, we are getting uh, liability insurance for abuse. Which includes sexual uh, harassment. Yeah, it's probably, we have such. I, it's and been about so a, It's just been a year. We just renewed our insurance, so I don't remember. We had a lot of things It might be, it might be in, there in there already. It's probably in there. I'm sure it is because it, it's, it's a thing that happens at businesses. Right. And we have we have two kinds of business insurance. So it's it's a general it's liability. Oh, it's in the general. So that's good. And then you know the E and O, the, the errors yeah. and omissions. I mean, you know, you're, you're, we're covered. We've got that. a few things like that. But, you know, um, I assume this, uh, some of it will go to the personnel committee and we'll be happy to review things with yeah, the handbook. We, 
Yeah, well, I'll, once I get the legal thing hound up and I'll I have it written up so that it meets, there's some criteria you have to meet to make it a legal policy. So, yes. so I'm doing that and then I'll bring it in yeah. and, um, and you guys can take a peek. Um, so we're adding a policy in the co-working terms of service that, that addresses that. Um, and uh, that's, that's all about that. Uh, Ilana, who's been our co-working uh, coordinator for a year, who's gotten us past the $10,000 mark, is um, leaving and uh, she's going to, uh, she was an arts major and is a ballerina and she has an opportunity to work at an arts nonprofit in her hometown. So she's gonna do that and we have hired her replacement and she is training him now. Mm. So we're, uh, they'll, uh, they'll work together for a week and then, and then he'll be on his own, sort of. Um, let's see, uh, we are also, so it says in my report that we're reviewing, we're interviewing people, we actually found someone. Um, under paid services, uh, we invoice for captioning for the first time. It's so exciting. So we did that in, uh, for the August meetings. So we're, um, I'm just gonna take a picture of that check when it comes in. <laughs> um, we've got, uh, under building and facilities, we, uh, Matilda has been working really hard with some volunteers to reorganize the equipment room. What we found was, it was organized, but it was organized only if you knew what you were looking for. I mean, you kind of had to know some stuff to get in there and find a thing. It was all in numbers, but then when you looked at the big group of stuff, it was like, mm. So what, what Matilda's doing now, is uh, everything has a number and it's going on the shelf in the order of the number. So if you don't know anything, you're just looking for 4512, you can pull it off the shelf. So sometimes our coordinators know a lot about video and sometimes they don't. So this way, they don't have to know much. And um, it's a big deal. And they had to add new shelves and rearrange how everything fits. And it's been, it's been a, a big deal. And Matilda has done all the things. She's vacuumed all the dust from installing the shelves and <laughs> filled all the divots in and painted them. And she's done a great job of getting shelves. Keith made shelves for one, a rack that we already <coughs> had. And so, you haven't, but you're, are you still going to? Yes. Okay. So, we're And I got some help from Jim and <laughs> Sherry. Yeah, there were other volunteers. And, uh, and Matilda, she didn't stop there. She came in here and filled in all the divots in the studio and no, painted uh, them because they were white, big white spots here and there, mm -hmm. kind of terrible. So she added all of that, which was great. So um, we've done a little bit on the building and uh, in, under communications and advertising, uh, we had, we, I think the last time we talked, we had been approved for our Google AdWords on our main community television website. And then in order to direct people from there to our co-working site or our website for renting equipment, we had to get additional approvals, which we did do. So during that time, uh, we got those approved. And um, uh, the advertising agency that we have, because we're a nonprofit, has offered to make some ads for us, make video ads. So we've given them some of our video and some of our photos. And they've uh, added, they're doing some of the creative. And they're also paying for, they're adding, they're, they're matching my advertising money so that we can get a bigger push. And let's see. Uh, we're still working on the website. I got distracted by a bunch of stuff that happened, but it's it looks nice. It just doesn't have any text that makes any sense. <laughs> I know it's just all that babble, yeah. but it looks great, and um, yep, uh, that's kind of <laughs> that's where we are right now. So that's my report for oh. the summer. Wow! Excellent. 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 Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Exciting times. Oh yes. <laughs> all right. Wow. Um, did wow. anybody have any further, we uh, interspersed some questions there. Did anybody have any further questions, uh, clarifications? Um, I know at the county we're very happy. We're um, now feeding captions. Not only is it going out over the cable, but we're feeding captions to our, um, currently we're using two different encoders and two different uh, <laughs> streaming <laughs> platforms. Yeah, to get it to uh, go to the, to the other the closed circuit thing or um, the for our our agenda management system yeah which got purchased by yeah got swallowed up by a bigger whale yeah. and we had issues performing anyway so we're captioning two different places right. and and um it's a little da da but it's uh i know <laughs> i've ordered the book but victor's <laughs> like we need this one more weird thing we need one more weird thing and we've ordered i think four Weird things. So <laughs> <laughs> but the, ca you know, the captions certainly give you a sense of what's going on, and yeah. um, um, it's very exciting. I know yeah, everybody's very happy. In the building, because people, the sound's not up, so that makes right. sense. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, 
Since nobody has any uh, further questions, I think we can move on to, um, Becca mentioned the board retreat. So let's go into a little more detail about that. The uh, summaries from the subcommittees. Um, one of the subcommittees was the Hot Studio subcommittee. And uh, Adam, did you have a little report from that committee? Yeah. All right. We're not Please. talking about a hot yoga studio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so Keith and Becca and I met, and we started by just generating um, and brainstorming a list of possible uses for a hot studio here um, in the building. And um, so this is not an Do exhaustive you want to explain list. explain what for everybody else what a hot studio is? Um, so there's a space that is currently in editing bay. Correct, mm -hmm. Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. And um, so we're going to, to transform that into a place where um, customers can come or clients can come and with a push of a button, if you will, um, be able to record something and so not have a lot of um, experience or background or skill with video production, but be able to create something that's really nice. How's that? And take it away on their little flash drive. So yeah. Plug their flash drive yeah. in, press the button, they talk, pull it out, off they go. Not have to make dozens of phone calls to find a crew. And <laughs> <laughs> Any questions about that? Oh, that's pretty cool. No, I just want to make sure okay. people listening yeah. at home that they yeah. kind of yeah. understand no, what I, we're I talking understood about. that. I just didn't know if no. I needed to fill any, any more. No. That was great. So the, um, the list of potential uses are in your report, and, um, but we thought that you know, mainly it would be people um, giving presentations, um, perhaps lectures, but then also doing some marketing, um, product intros, um, explainers, even maybe even down to video resumes or video wills, if you want to go there, and um, video greeting cards, oral history, poetry, performance art. Um, uh, public service announcements, and um, so there's some other ones there, um, and video blogs and uh, like kind of a story core kind of thing where they bring people in, ask them a question, and, and get responses that way. So, so we came up with a, a really good list, and so from that, then we were trying to identify, okay, what in the first phase of the hot studio would we really need, and then maybe we could add other things later that would meet some other um, potential uses. So the list we generated, uh, the features or the equipment that we need, we need the ability to have somebody to be able to switch from the video of them to um, some stills um, in a PowerPoint slide um, or, or images that are advancing through with a, a little remote control. So make, mm -hmm. trying to make that very easy for them, maybe using a switch um, that they push um, from their foot to be able to go back and forth. Um, <clears throat> and then to have some kinds of backgrounds, we can obviously we can paint that wall, but then also to have some, some type of scenery in the background. So we're thinking about kind of the photography shades that you can pull down and have some, um, some variety for people. And then a, uh, obviously a camera, a USB camera with presets, and so that they don't, they're not having to zoom or pan or do any of that. Um, Becca mentioned that if somebody's reading a, a teleprompter or something, it would be nice for them to have their hands on something so that they're not doing weird things with their hands. Um, and so I think that was something that we talked about maybe coming out from the wall something I don't know if you've heard if you've seen that that movie Talladega Nights with Will Ferrell where his <laughs> hands kind of creep <laughs> <laughs> and then um, a good microphone a condenser mic correct Keith oh. and so some something that we um, have in the audio booth that's worked really nicely would um, would also be added and then Two things that uh, we are including in the package for the schools for the grant program. Uh, one is a teleprompter, and um, we would add a foot pedal to control the speed of that teleprompter, and then the three-point lighting kit, similar to what we've included in that package. And bottom line, as uh, I think Becca said, um, is that it has to be simple. No training required, mm -hmm. no tech support required, and recording straight to a flash drive. Mm -hmm. And um, Keith, I don't know if you wanted to just give some background on the Penn State uh, One Button Studio or? There's an example from Penn State of um, something they call the One Button Studio. 
and they have a build list and they have a piece of software. The problem is, is the software they have is not open source. It's free, but it's not open source. We can't change it. And the equipment that they have specified no longer works with their software. Mm. So, and the equipment for doing that remote control of lighting and stuff has actually come quite a ways since they originally did it. So it's much easier to do <coughs> now. So we have some examples of what to do. Uh, Maitreya told us about the, they're both called OBS. The Open Broadcast Studio, as well as the One Button Studio. Uh. So it gets confusing. <laughs> but I believe that Open Broadcast Studio can do everything that we would want to do, and it's open source. So I think we could just pull pieces we want from that and, and be able to, to do it. The one thing that came up in talking to Matilda about this is we should really consider uh, a way to do a marketing survey to see if there really is a need in this community for that. And Becca has some ideas as to how to address that. Would you want to Sure, sure. That? Um, look, I've done this kind of market survey before for CMAP. When we were going to do a, a project, we wanted to see if the community would really want to be involved, because we needed them to donate money to it and to uh, then uh, make content for it. And uh, we didn't know if people would actually do that. We sort of we knew they wanted the bread. We just didn't know if they wanted to bake it. <laughs> so um, what we uh, did was we I hired a, a person from the place where I got our account, and she did this market survey. She used Facebook. She built a Facebook page about it, and then connected it to a big network of other things. And so we could do that. We could you know connect to a lot of other um, businesses or people that we think would use this. We kind of help her figure out who the market is. Then she gets something to the market, and what she we went through, and I wrote down all the things we wanted to know, and she really refined the questions more like a scientist would. So we got the right answers and had enough repeats. So in case you didn't get the question or were trying to answer it in a different way, uh, you got it uh, several times in different ways. And then um, what we did was we had a drawing for I think um, Amazon gift cards. So we had three of those, and if you took the survey, you were in a drawing, and you would win. You had a chance to win those, and so a lot of people did the survey, mm -hmm. and uh, then she sent me a PowerPoint presentation of all the inf all the information that she got from it, and she showed different trends and whether you know what the overall feeling was, and then she drilled down on different specific things, and what we learned was that people did want to have. Uh, it was a radio station we were talking about. They did want a radio station, but they didn't want to make content for it, and they didn't want to give any money to it. So they really just wanted to listen to music in their town, <laughs> basically. So, um, so that was really helpful to us, though, because there was a small vociferous group of people there that would come to all the meetings and talk about how much they wanted to do it, but they, they never really were able to make any progress, and I felt like it probably because no one else but you guys wants to do it. So we, we did this. Um, study and, and it turned out that that was what was true. But So we could do something like that here. We can hire some, we can figure out the market, figure out some questions, kind of put it somewhere where we think these people will be and mm -hmm. see if we can get people to talk about whether they would use a studio like this. We might send it to everybody in the Chamber of Commerce maybe and, and um, other production companies and see just who might use it. I mean, we just have to, we've got our list of places that we think people might want to, things we think people might want to do with it. So we can start there and see what people think if we want to. It's not very expensive. And the good news, I think, is that at the end of that, you also know who's interested. That yeah. helps us with targeting mm -hmm. AdWords uh, once we yeah. introduce it. Mm. And then we'll have a whole bunch of names of people. We know where they are, and <laughs> if they're if they're interested in this, and we do it, then we can keep them posted. Is there anywhere else in town that has this? I don't think so. I don't think so. I can imagine. There was uh, the, the term "hot studio" comes from, um, I believe, where it's it's aimed at producing content for a, a channel, where a person can come in and push a button, and then they can record a program of themselves. Mm -hmm. And I believe that the public access station in Palo Alto has been doing that for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I know of one producer from here who went there because they had they didn't want to have the trouble getting crew anymore, mm -hmm. like you were saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so uh, we also discussed this at the volunteer advisory committee because we thought we'd ask some of our volunteers what they thought of this, and there was some initial reluctance. But when explained that one feature is that it could 
increase the number of people who would provide content for our channels, I felt that that really brought the mm -hmm. volunteers on board. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is our mission. So, I mean, we're, yes, we want to look at whether it's a financial viable, it's viably, viable financially. We also can consider the fact that it, if it increases the amount of content we get from the community and the interaction with the community, it is a part of our mission. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a great way to capture little things like like a, like people talking about their memories of some like on somebody's birthday or some grandfather's birthday and all the things that they remember about him to make a little video and send it or or and th those little things that you can imagine it like a photo booth but it's a video booth mm -hmm. well, and all the different kinds of ways you might mm -hmm. use that. Well, I know in, in well. Cap Capitola Museum we've actually did, done something where we bring someone out to do this exact oh. same thing and that's mm -hmm. visualizing would be much mm -hmm. easier to just mm -hmm. come someplace to do it rather yeah. than having to mm -hmm. <laughs> <set> <laughs> <the program. laughs> for sure it was you know we could do a, a thing too where we invite people in to answer a question we could get the whole mm -hmm. everybody's thoughts on something and that would be kind of fun we just keep pushing the button record a big long thing and put it on tv it might be a good promotional um you know when we have uh uh, oh, like we have events here. Yeah, it might be a Fridays nice, a fun thing. Like yeah, first yeah. Friday, come in and, yeah. and then get people in there to try it mm -hmm. out, and yeah. hopefully so realize the potential. That's yeah, 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 absolutely. I like yeah. that idea. Um, yeah, I kind of think you know, if if you build uh, the marketing, um, you know, uh, study sounds like a great idea, but I think it's also like if you build it, they will come. Sort of, mm -hmm. you know, I think um, you know, if we can get the word out that we have this, mm -hmm. um, assuming we go forward with yeah. building it. But um, I think we're all pretty excited. Uh, it sounds like um, I think well, people will. Yeah, I walk, think people hopefully. will have ideas that we haven't thought of. Right, of ways yeah. to use yeah, it. For sure. Um, one thing I was thinking about was picture in picture. Also, that's a nice mm -hmm. ability, and that's one thing that OBS does very easily. Um, if we can figure out a way to uh, make it easy for people to use, right? Um, yeah. Anyways, I, we can geek out about that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we did talk about that. Well, I, I have the remote. Actually, there's a, there's, a, there's a remote app you can use with OBS. So we could just have a tablet there, and people okay. could have presets. They could just hit nice. on the uh, on a tablet to, to bring up picture in picture. Or <laughs> it, it's pretty powerful. So Yeah, and we talked about the possibility of having green screen. Mm -hmm. and yeah. They do have that ability to right. do, uh, if do they some post it at home, Yeah, if they could take it away and just key yeah. it, which keying is easy now. You mm -hmm. can key things in iMovie, and they look wonderful. Mm -hmm. And it, that's a very simple program. All right, All right. Great. Well, thank you for that wonderful report. Yeah, that's excellent. very exciting. Um, I am, it's a hard act to follow because uh, I'm chairing the venues equipment subcommittee. Um, and I think we have a uh, spreadsheet. That's all. That's as far as we've gotten so far. Um, <laughs> did you? <laughs> shall, shall I go ahead and? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we. I, I just. You know. It's been a busy month for me in my defense. But um, um, thankfully, um, um, director uh, who's not here right now, Owen, uh, Owen. Owen um, gave me a little tickle. Say hey. Um, so I don't want to name any venues, but we made a list. Um, we. She has a personal. Um, connection with one of them. Um, I've talked to, I think we mentioned before, I've talked to um, somebody over at the uh, Louder Nelson. I was shooting an event at another one of the venues and, and mentioned it informally to one of the um, uh, management people there. So um, I think we're we'll probably get together and come up with some sort of a presentation. Um, I was thinking mm -hmm. some sort of uh, marketing material might be nice, um, even if it's just product sheets for Say the TriCaster or the TriCaster Mobile, the cameras, you know, something we can show people. Um, uh, maybe some sort of marketing material. Well, um, you know, we have systems in in uh, government chambers now, and it's going to be something somewhat similar. So we could uh, have a little something that we could show people. Um, um, this is what we have already, and this is kind of what you'd be getting, and um, hopefully. Uh, we can get a number of venues in Santa Cruz County to uh, to lease equipment from us and possibly um, produce content for the station. Yeah, yeah. So um, um, yeah, so let's we'll get together right mm -hmm. sometimes uh, soon and come up with a game plan, and uh, we'll work with you, Becca, to yeah, um, yeah. Maybe figure out what we can actually offer come people. Come sit in and see what we can really offer. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We don't want to promise people stuff things. that we can't give them. Right. Right. Yeah, and we want to give them stuff we know. 
Right. So because we are maintaining, yeah. <laughs> so right. now it's something exotic. Right. So we have, and it took a really long time to di get the list of stuff we do for schools. Now we've honed that down. Mm -hmm. We've got a kind of a really good list now. But every once in a while, something goes away, and we have to figure out a new thing to mm -hmm. go in there because they don't make that thing anymore. Yeah. But yeah, if we can keep it pretty similar to what we do for schools, right. that's helpful. And that's and, and I there might be an audio package that's different than what we do for mm -hmm. schools because it's a setting thing. So there'll always be some little thing offshoot that right. customizes it, but right. we want to we want to standardize that as well. Right. And I think one of the selling points would be that um, you know we can train you or uh, to to use the equipment yourself, or if you need somebody, you know, we um, there might be community TV people who are familiar with the equipment who. Uh, would be willing to yeah, come if in. we standardize it, if we use what we use here, then yeah, we can send our own guys. They can, right. you know, they'd have to pay them, but we can send our own technicians. Yeah. To but I assume it would be probably more cost effective for them since yeah. there's not a whole bunch of gear that has to be get yeah, brought there, there and set up. So yeah, they're just paying for um, people. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm excited about that and I'm hoping to get something moving with that. Um, anything to add? No, I, you've covered it well. All right, thank you. Excellent. Um, so then we had another um, com subcommittee we formed, the, the library program subcommittee, and mm -hmm. I believe Janice, uh, you are the chair of that. Would you like to comment yes, on that? Yes, very much. Um, what happened at the retreat was there was a proposal that we deepen the relationship between community TV and the public library. Um, in a very, right now it's a very um, loose concept that needs to be uh, made more specific, but basically we're talking about the possibilities of the library leasing equipment, of uh, CTV offering um, people with expertise who might help us teach some classes we would offer venues, and there may be several other things that we can develop when we sit down and talk. So the first thing that I needed to do was go back to the library and see what the interest would be, talk to the people who would be involved. So I started with the director of the library and just generally outlined um, the idea. And she's very enthusiastic, very supportive of it. So then I spoke to the um, people at the library who would be using the equipment we're talking about, organizing the classes that we're talking about, and um, documenting some things that we need to document. Because one of the immediate things that happened as soon as I talked to that staff was they immediately started coming up with all the ideas <laughs> that they could um, carry out if this, something like this happened. So they are very excited. I do want to explain a little bit that in the public library, you have two kinds of things going on simultaneously. You have a need to train our staff on technical issues and dealing with public who have questions about technology. And we have the need to um, train the public and offer opportunities to the public. So the staff that I talk to have both wear both hats. So sometimes they're designing classes for the public and sometimes they're designing classes for the staff. So once um, I got that interest, then the next step would be to call a meeting, but I've been unable to do that because our director is out of state in a, on a family emergency that has become more prolonged than predicted. Mm -hmm. And she's not back um, in California yet. So I really don't want to have the first meeting without her. She's uh, very enthusiastic, but, and she knows you know, how far we will be able to go and what we can talk about. But the idea is, at that point, to get um, people from the subcommittee, from community TV, together with Susan, the director of the library, with me, and the people who would do the actual work in the library, and then we could talk about what we would like to do. CTV can tell us what we might be able to do and what equipment we might be able to use. And I am very sure we can find um, a program to agree on. So right now, I'm really just waiting um, for the director to be able to get her feet on the ground again. And um, we will go forward. But uh, there's great enthusiasm. And we were very excited about the offer. Oh, th thank you very much, Excellent. Janice. A wonderful report. I'm looking forward to hearing how things progress. Yeah, me too. Um, so I think we had one other subcommittee. I don't know if it had a formal 
uh, name, but it involved uh, meeting with a local umbrella uh, foundation. To no, we I did that. that. We okay. did. We did yeah. that. Okay. Uh, did, anything to report from that, or uh, not really? Okay. We went. We went, we, and we met with the ED from the community foundation, and there, no, there was nothing. We. It was just sort of a get to know you. Here we are. Mm -hmm. This is what we do. What do you do? Can we fit in? And she yeah. named a bunch of different things that they're doing. None of them hopped off the page as things that really meshed with us. I think what the things that I heard that might work, I think we have to partner with another organization to do. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's we got information and, and we did. But one thing we were very successful is uh, that they would like to come and yeah, they're gonna see come it. And see what we do. Because they still mm -hmm. have the old mm -hmm. CTV okay. that, mm -hmm. they, that they remember. And they'll probably be totally surprised about what we have now. All the changes, yeah. So, you know, we left it. We were very courteous and uh, listened and gave some ideas about what we thought could be done. And uh, then we invited them to come in. So they said they would. And I bet you they will. Oh, right. I think so. Yeah, Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. That sounds like a good uh, yeah, relationship no, to strengthen. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Um, <coughs> since... Since, you have the, since you have the talking stick, um, would you like to give the oral report um, from the Volunteer Advisory Committee, the VAC? Sure, I'll, I'll keep it brief. We had a, a meeting recently. Uh, the group is uh, very excited about what you have been telling Keith and me also, is about uh, CTV stories. And we've had that on our um, plan for a while, that there would be more on TV about what people are doing here and why they're doing it, so that the public gets to see, uh, you know, what, what is CTV? Mm -hmm. I mean, um, they may not know, then, you know, to actually lower the threshold a little bit for people. Mm -hmm. And that brings me then to the next part is that uh, Keith and Becca and I have been working on getting a new class schedule. And so our first orientation is on November. He'll look it up. And um, so we'll do kind of uh, an orientation once in two months. So we're going to have, a, Becca said, you know, we're going to be more successful if we have regularly scheduled mm -hmm. classes. So we're going to do once in a two months an orientation. Then soon thereafter, like this one is uh, Wednesday, uh, November 14th. 14th. And then uh, that Saturday, we have the camera class. And so we would kind of combine those every two months. And then Keith is going to do an audio class once in uh, three months. December 6th. Huh? December 6th. December 6th, right. And then uh, Becca's going to let us know when her husband can do another field camera class. We probably would that, do that also four times a year. And we already set some dates. Yeah, November, March, and August. Yeah, November, March, and August. But we don't know yet uh, what would be his schedule. Mm -hmm. So we would like to do, uh, continue that. And based on what has been going on in the, f uh, <coughs> in the Volunteer Advisory Committee, we really would like to help more or support more uh, organizations in the community with getting some um, shadowing of field camera things. Because you know, in the past, when we had money to spend on operations, People could hire her for a low rate, and then we would go out and, and, and shoot in the community. That is no longer possible, but um, the members of the, the VAC still feel that's a very valid and good outreach to the community, you know, based on our mission. So we have said that if we get some people in the field camera class that want to continue and then some of the older, more experienced mm -hmm. camera people will go out with them, mm -hmm. you know, with a little group, that specifically if those are camera people from the organizations themselves, because that's what really needs to happen, is that people from the organizations themselves need to come and take the classes. So then we can then shorten the step of not us doing everything as volunteers, but train you, help you, and then let you go, and then you can do your own. Mm. Uh, which both, both would be good for the content on CTV, but also for the organizations themselves. 
So we've been talking about that. Um, the other thing I want to notice is that some of the programs, you know, I've mentioned the, uh, the poetry show before, and I heard today from Jim that he's going to uh, submit one of his poetry shows, which is seen in 128 countries on YouTube. He's going to uh, submit it to the WAVE. Good. 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 I know you've asked, you know, are we yeah. going to do it? I don't have any time to sure, submit not. anything that I have. <laughs> Because I've been in the equipment room, not just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I've been in the cave. No. Um, and I also had, I've also helped produce another uh, person, uh, Nancy Gwag Grinnig, who did Future We Need and How to Get It. And she actually has some people she knows in Ohio who were very interested in it. And they then spoke to some people at the Dayton uh, Peace Center. And now all of a sudden they're in communication about that maybe some money can come and we'll do, you know, because of course we were all, you know, I mean, she was totally a beginner and we helped her and all that, but we didn't know exactly, you know, we all grew together and it came out that at the end we knew exactly what we wanted to do. Mm. And so apparently the Dayton Peace Center might be interested in, in you know, and that some of it will be taped here and then, I don't know, they were talking international stuff and I said, well. fine. TV mm -hmm. is TV, you know, good programming, let's make it the best we can. Mm -hmm. So, and I know that some of our other um, um, producers, you know, are really intent to, to uh, increase their, their, the quality of their programs. And uh, one of our members, Linda Janakis, is going to do another green screen uh, class. And I'm uh, sure so you come. Uh, <laughs> I know you. And another director class. So we try to improve our skills and at the same time do more outreach to the community. That's it. Oh, well, thank you very much, Matilda. Does anybody have any questions uh, about the report? Um, I, I'll just add that um, I think that's a great idea. The idea of the the, uh, the mentoring, the the the, yeah. um, the shadowing in the field. Uh, you know, the classes go over the basics of how to use the equipment, techniques. But really, it's about practice, and it's about getting out there, right? And, and um, you know, at least there used to be some kind of like entry-level studio shows that, that would take anybody um, who wanted to come and get some, some practice in the studio. But in terms of getting out there in the field, mm -hmm. um, being out there with somebody who's more experienced, I mean, I know in my development as a videographer, that was priceless, you know? Mm -hmm being there with more experienced videographers. So I think that's a great idea. Um, I'm excited to see that develop. That's the next time. Great, thank you. Um, and so um, I don't know if anybody's watching noticed that um, they, when they saw me, they thought maybe Keith, this is what Keith looks like <laughs> when he shaves, clean shaving. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm still the vice chair at the moment. And we have a uh, uh, very dedicated, um, still chair, um, Keith Gudger. And would you please, um, if you would, give us your oral report. Well, those, I think we pretty much covered most everything. Um, we have one new piece of equipment here in the studio, which you know about the in-ear monitors, which so we have a wireless way to communicate back to a host or a band when they're performing. Um, no one's actually used it yet, but it's up and running. And for Skype, Skype phone calls? And the, and that's Skype. the final link in making Skype work here mm. in the studio. That's Excellent. pretty much it. Um, Did you ever get those light bulbs changed? Uh, I just picked them up today. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next time I can get the How many people there. does it take? <laughs> right. How many, how many um, board chairs does it take to change a light bulb? To change a light bulb? Yeah. That, 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 that's the dedication of, of this gentleman yeah, here. Just is one that, when it's key. When it's key. <laughs> <laughs> Except he might want to re-engineer the, uh, yeah, no, the, no. the technology. <laughs> <laughs> you might see some improvements that could be made. Um, um, great. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, um, I appreciate uh, Keith allowing me to, to get a little practice here with a, a safety net in case I uh, stumble. Um, uh, so uh, does anybody, I'll uh, move on to item 13, that was item 12. Uh, does any board member or member of the staff have a request for specific items to appear on our next meeting agenda? I would like to see the, um, the subcommittee's report again in oh, October, yeah, if that's all right. Ooh, accountability, huh? 
So I, 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 we have to get something done now. You know, we had a good <laughs> retreat, and everyone I felt was really energized about the, the projects we came up with. I'd like yeah. to just see it keep going, and I think all of us would too. That's good. Yeah. That's how I would best. I would, I would that. expect that's that, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, well, since yeah. I think you're, you're going to be preparing that agenda, so yes. still. But uh, yeah. I, I want it in the minutes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. I, I think uh, there's a scent for that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if there's no other further business, um, I would like to um, make some announcements. Um, first, let's thank our crew today, um, which is Karen Scott, Jean Kratzer, Sherry Ross, and Jim Russo. We appreciate our members um, facilitating this uh, meeting and its uh, accessibility to the public. Um, if there are no other announcements that board members would like to make, I uh, will entertain a motion for adjournment. I'll submit a motion to adjourn the meeting. I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. All right, thank you very much. Have a good evening.